What's up guys, welcome back for another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video. Uh, earlier today Konami revealed a new archetype calling, or called, or being called, Megalith. It's a new ritual archetype that uh, very specifically doesn't need, or the, the ritual monsters don't need a, a, a ritual spell to get, them on the, to get them on the field. So they all have their own monster effects that kind of acts like a, a ritual summon. So they have like three level 4 monsters, level 4 ritual monsters, and three uh, higher, higher level monsters, level 8 if I'm not mistaken. They're quote unquote boss monsters and their higher level monsters all have the built-in effect that they are basically the ritual spell for the archetype and uh, one of the higher levels also has a hand trap like effect that lets you um, ritual summon during your opponent's turn you know by discarding itself basically a ritual spell again the small levels are your pilots i guess very similar to cosmos uh, to cosmo one is like a stratos uh, searches monsters one is like the spell and trap card searcher for the deck they have a field spell a very excellent card gets your resources back from the graveyard the trap card is also fine basically basically a call of the haunted very similar to true king return right um, and then they also have like another level 4, the last level 4, it's like a Dark World dealing, so draw one, discard one. That one is also quite good since that also has a quick effect that during your opponent's turn, very similar to the other level 4s, you can use itself, sacrifice itself to uh, again ritual summon by using itself and then the other um, levels, right? And you can definitely exceed the amount needed, so that, that's again very flexible. This is a Stratos, your Ophil, Ophil I, I forgot its name again butchering its name probably um, the second one oak oak uh, or you know however you want to pronounce them is like the dark world dealings and um i believe uh, I, at least this is again some of the first hours of testing i the the thing how i feel that these guys could be played this you know attributing level fours themselves get a spell search get a monster search and preferably ending with the level 4 that has like the quick effect during your opponent's turn like ritual summon and then you know like the shino birds drop them during your opponent's turn to bounce either the monsters up to three or spells so up to three spells uh, or send them back to the deck right in case of spells so that's good but again it, it, it the thing is that you know the level 4 okay needs to be phase upon the field so your opponent could already lure it out with something like cerberus nightmare cerberus or any, any other of um, monster removal right or with the other possibility is I have that uh, level 8 one to discard it from the graveyard to ritual summon again during the opponent's turn so you have two options to ritual summon during your opponent's turn one of the higher level monsters has the ability that uh, as soon as it's on the field I believe its base attack is like 2500 and uh, for any ritual monster in your graveyard a different name all monsters on your side of the field I believe will gain 300 attack so that's why the incantations got the extra attack boost there. Um, this duel probably already was over unless of course the impermanence otherwise this would not be a featured duel of course but again impermanence keeps me in the duel it's it's quite obvious that this deck very similar to necros and of course like incantations your deck is like like google you're, you're searching your entire deck so even though it's 60 cards um you know, well, it's incantations, right? You're running so many incantations, and I, I believe they're needed. The, because the, the ritual summon on their own, like, with your level 4s, you do need other monsters to get the um, the higher levels on the field. So I think you still need your incantations. And uh, something I might want to try out in the future is a pure build, a pure uh, megalith deck that might be cute. But there, I feel there's one fatal flaw here for the archetype, is that uh, what, what, what does it want to do? Um, Again, okay, you can do some cute stuff. Ritual summon during your opponent's turn. Put that beat stick on the field. You have the field spell that's somewhat very similar to the uh, true Draco diagram that protects your monsters. Um, you have the trap card that reborns, very similar to True King's Return that reborns every time during both players' turns. So, okay, that's cool. But where is like a huge advantage and uh, you know the, like the, the big monsters are to put pressure on your opponent? That's where the archetype currently still lacking. So I feel that you need to look out for maybe other archetypes types or other decks uh, to somewhat uh, you know use these new cards along with and Shino Bird seems fine uh, Necros might also be okay but again then then there's like that that small voice voice in the back of my mind saying that well you're probably just making like a regular Necros incantation deck worse so Again, that's something. Uh, the Mega Zoborg is also definitely an option, right? You can definitely do that with the Antis, Herald, all definitely options. Again, just 60 cards, like always, you'll feedback, right? Just 
<laughs> the first couple of hours of playtesting. Uh, also one of the advantages I feel for the Shino birds is of course pre-prep. Pre-prep immediately searching out the ritual monster and ritual spell, giving the targets for the incantations to get them on the field. And of course, giving the possibility that your uh, megalith monsters, well some of them, have the potential, have the ability to ritual summon during your opponent's turn. Again, none of the advantage of the archetype. So that's why the Shino birds definitely feel okay with this archetype. Another example here, going for yeah, going first, going second. The deck can do both. Um, eventually, I also added like more rank eight monsters just in case. But this isn't really the deck that you know wants to use the extra deck that much. Um, I, I think just fairly standard is to end your board with like the level four or you know the call of the haunted to, to reborn the level four during your opponent's turn to instantly make that uh, effect life to ritual summon during their turn, but. Well, again, feel free to leave feedback. Like, there are are there any other ritual monsters that might be better? I'm looking at maybe the the, the mice monsters blow up the entire field or something like that. Um, so yeah, here the same, right? I do at least I had the option to ritual summon, uh, but Cerberus destroyed the monster. Doesn't really matter. I can still, uh, or at least I could have chained the effect. But I was like, no, I'm going to keep um, the Shino bird in my hand and then you know just discard one of the higher level monsters. The what is it called, Abatron? To, again, Ritual Summon during the opponent's turn, but uh, Call by the Grave. <laughs> That's the problem. Okay, the advantage is that you don't need Ritual Spells, but, well, like, indirectly you're also... Well, your higher level monsters are your ritual spells, but that makes them vulnerable to Call by the Grave, and that's that's a problem since everyone and their mother is main decking Call by the Grave. So, again, one of the big weaknesses of the deck is very uh, it's very easily stopped. A well timed hand trap, Ash Blossom, uh, Call by the Grave mainly could definitely stop this deck in its tracks. So, again, a lot of flaws still for this deck. So yeah, the incantations getting a lot of advantage again. I use my null summon for the mind juice slash same juice searcher and uh, one of the bigger monsters, the Beath Beathor, or Bethor, uh, the, the card you see here has the ability to pop cards from your opponent equal to the amount of different rituals you have in your graveyard. So it's kind of similar like the the Shino Bird, but Shino Bird bounces while the Beathor. Um, Pops, right? So destroy. So it, it's cool B because, well, the, the small downside is that you have to, like, maybe maximize on all the high levels since the high levels are your rituals and the, the only way to get the lower level force on the field is with those higher levels. So, again, that's like the small downside of the deck. So that's one of the reasons why you might want to cut down a couple of cards from the deck, maybe make it like 55 or 50 cards or, no, well, or maybe play it pure. But again, I feel the deck is still missing something. Pure seems a bit... It's, it's Again, yeah, it's, it's just missing something. Last example against dinosaurs, the Ash Blossom preventing the search, I'm opening it is fine. Having the, the most right card is the quick effect, the discard, ritual summon during the opponent's turn. The middle one is the guy that pops, uh, you know, depending on how many rituals you have in your graveyard. So, the incantation engine again, getting the pop guy on my side of the field. So, I think I have two rituals, you know, with the chain links, making sure that the field spell is chain link one. And then, you know, the last um, chain will resolve backwards, getting the ritual or one of the ritual monsters from my graveyard back to the hand, thanks to the field spell. So, the field spell is definitely good. One of those cards that I might want to max out on, since it's currently at two. With the mindset, it's searchable off of the level four, one of the level fours. But again, it's a very important card, maintaining resources. So yeah, getting the big beat stick on the field. I don't have an option to ritual summon during the opponent's turn, but I think this was my only option. Small weakness is that level 4s do have a very low attack point, a very low attack amount. And this is uh, a mistake, I guess. The field spell having the same effect, a protection effect as uh, the Gondic Diagram. Again, one of the ritual monsters not being able or being destroy a battle once I guess and uh, this keeps the big boss big beat stick big attack booster on my side of the field and now it's basically force out the conductor tyranno the straddles here getting something big from the graveyard with the field spell drop the spell searcher fueling basically fueling my graveyard with multiple ritual monsters and eventually drop the destroyer I guess pops multiple cards depending on how many rituals I have and I was able to search out the spell um, the trap apologies but again the trap also triggers the field spell get something back so I mean this is all cute all gimmicky but for a top tier deck I mean 
this is not a top tier deck. Not not highly competitive, but it's something fun, something to try out, maybe something to you know, maybe other archetypes, other ritual archetypes, demise maybe, macros maybe. But again, like always, feel free to leave feedback. Um, okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching, and feel free to leave a card or like if you enjoyed the video. Leave them signing out. Peace.